My name is Jason Griffey. I am the Director <clears throat> of Strategic Initiatives at NISO. Um, and I have been a part of the Seamless Access um, group through um, a little more than a year now. And so I'm here to give you a kind of current state um, and let you know exactly sort of where we are, uh, where we were, where we are, and where we're going. Um, so um, got about 10 minutes here and I'm going to talk about sort of why, what is it that we're doing uh, with seamless access, what, what we're doing right now, and then uh, give you a little bit of information how you can be a part of it and um, begin an implementation if this is something that you're interested in for your organization. So a quick recap to um, just sort of set the stage for where we are now. Um, the uh, early days of seamless access began as a different project, the resource access in the 21st century, uh, RA21, um, as it's better known. And that started way back in 2016 to talk through what were the technical challenges uh, around remote access. The um, RA21 group was broadly inclusive of the information uh, ecosystem and after uh, couple of years of discussion, it was decided that federated authentication was really sort of the future of um, the authentication game. Um, that project ended roughly uh, the middle of 2019. Uh, initially, um, recommended practice was published in April. There were enormous numbers of comments. It was actually the most heavily commented NISO recommended practice um, in history. Uh, over 200 comments uh, were available on that particular uh, recommended practice. And then uh, that was fun. A final version was published in June of 2019. And then at that point, seamless access really kicked off as a method of implementizing the uh, recommended practice, right? Putting that recommended practice into, into uh, practice for use in the world. And so Seamless Access formed from five founding organizations, as um, was said earlier, NISO and STM, um, ORCID, Internet2, and Jayant are also a part of the governing board and are providing a enormous amount of uh, technical assistance for, uh, for the project. And so what is it? What are we doing? Um, well, we are really trying to make federated authentication a much, much easier process for the end user. So uh, we knew as a part of the RE21 project that the future of authentication was going to be increasingly off campus. In 20, from 2016 to 2019, we did not realize exactly how much it was going to be off campus. Um, we did not predict a global pandemic, uh, fortunately, but we did know at that time that there were going to be um, increasing reasons for people to need to you know, get to uh, licensed resources and other sorts of resources off, off campus and outside of IP ranges. Um, in addition, federated access provides um, the availability of personalization for different services, but also enhances the privacy aspect of the authentication process. And so uh, sort of a win, win, win for um, for the end user and for uh, implementers. But at the time that Seamless Access started, um, federated authentication was very fractured, right? Uh, everyone had their own methodology for it. It was located, the login was located in different places. The experience was entirely different for um, everyone involved. And so uh, for a user, very confusing, very hard to have any sort of uptake on the, um, on this. Um, when you make something hard to understand, right, the end user isn't going to be um, incentivized to, uh, to use that particular methodology. Um, so the idea of seamless access is that we provide a, a uniform user experience, that there be a standard button that is easily recognized by an end user as a method for authenticating via their um, university or organization, 
Um, it also, Seamless Access also provides some uh, memory for the federated authentication process um, through browser local storage that remembers the institution that is chosen by the individual so they don't have to choose repeatedly, <laughs> you know, from, um, from uh, session to session. We have a little bit of um, data coming out of some of our early adopters that shows that um, federated authentication um, is very popular with users when it is easy to do. Um, ACS was one of the first implementers of um, seamless access and uh, they went live in early March of this year. Obviously, this was also driven by the fact that people were fleeing campuses in early March, so it was quite good timing um, for, uh, for federated authentication to become more prominent, but they saw a 2,600% um, increase in federated authentications in March, and uh, they doubled that uh, in April um, for over a 5,000% increase. Of federated authentication. So we, we have some evidence that if you make this easier um, via something, uh, via seamless access that um, people will, will use it. So where are we right now? This was, um, you know, how we got here. What are we doing um, in the world right now? Well, uh, we are in a beta phase at this point and uh, the beta is expected to run at least through the end of this year uh, where we are ironing out some of the technical uh, challenges and putting in place some of the policy um, policies necessary to make this a an operational uh, project. But um, we expect that 2021 will give us um, sort of full uh, full operational services in um, in seamless access. We do, uh, we are in beta, but we do have a uh, wide variety of very large publishers relying on our platform already. Uh, we uh, currently live on uh, Seamless Access is ACS, Elsevier Science Direct, uh, Springer Nature uh, with nature.com, uh, Wiley, and then of course Adipon is acting as an enabler for a, a wide variety of other um, organizations they are live with seamless access um, integration as well. We have a number of committed and working on it um, organizations, Digital Science, O'Reilly Media, Taylor and Francis, um, Elsevier is expanding their, uh, their implementation from simply Science Direct to sort of their central authentication services. And then Daria in the EU uh, Daria in the EU is um, in the middle of an implementation as well. These are all expected roughly by the end of the year, so within the next several months. Uh, the service itself is broadly available. It is well, it is technically sound. We have a globally distributed CDN service that is uh, making it broadly available internationally. Um, we have SUNET acting as a monitoring and operation partner. And we have a, da a status dashboard that's available for anyone who wants to see um, what our sort of response times are, how the service is holding up, et cetera. We are uh, technically uh, broadly available. What are we doing to sort of further this? How do we, you know, what are we doing for sort of future proofing of seamless access and moving it from beta to implementation? We have a number of things going on. Um, you know, very, very busy these days. One of those is that Seamless Access has presented to the standards body refeds a series of entity categories for federated authentication that extend the availability of um, a variety of entity categories other than um, RNS that are more suited to the use of places like uh, libraries or, um, or other sort of uh, other non non research um, oriented uh, RNS oriented organizations. Uh, these three entity categories were available for uh, comment through the end of August. They are currently in um, discussion at refeds. Um, 
the public consultation process, all of the details are available at that URL if you want to see what was um, what was talked about and what was uh, discussed. Refeds will be the sort of holder of the standard, although NISO uh, obviously will also endorse the standard as it goes through the process. Chris, I'm getting a little bit of echo there from you, if you don't mind muting. Um, the entity category work also gave rise to a, a contract language working group where we are working to take the technical aspects of the entity federated entity categories and move those into some standardized contract language that may be used by libraries and service providers uh, and IDPs so that we have some common understanding of how these entity categories work in contractual matters. We're working on terms and conditions for service providers and IDPs. We're working on a user consent workflow to allow end users to make uh, more finely grained choices about what they would like to retain in their browser, what they would like to share. Um, we're working on um, IDP choices prior to authentication. We're working on uh, a number of feature requests, including the availability of uh, customized lists of IDPs through our interface. So how can you participate? What, uh, what can you do to be a part of this new, um, new service? Well, we have um, a website, seamlessaccess.org. If you go directly to seamlessaccess.org slash work, you can see the sort of stages of implementation, how you can, um, how your organization can be a part of this as well. Uh, our project manager, Heather Flanagan, is happy to um, help that process along, get you, uh, get you attached to the people that may be able to help you with that. And her, uh, she is available at contact at seamlessaccess.org. If you are an identity provider or a library, or you want to talk to identity providers or libraries about this process, um, you know, the, um, the first is, you know, is your institution using SAML <laughs> and talking to the IT or other organization on campus that is um, responsible for your SAML, um, for your SAML implementation. Uh, Almost entire, almost certainly that involves working with your IT department. And so we do have some um, documentation on our website that talks, talks you through some of the questions you may want to ask of that. Um, there are of course vended solutions. Um, we're gonna hear about one of those in a little bit. And um, if you would like to get involved, we have a number of working groups that are currently busy. And so if you're a part of an identity provider or a library and you'd like to be a part of the conversation and help shape this process, you can do that as well. Um, we have monthly email updates, status reports. Um, we have a blog on our website and uh, all of that is available either at contact at seamlessaccess.org. You can get on the email list or directly at seamlessaccess.org if you would like to just join and see what we are doing. And so that's us, that's seamlessaccess.org. Um, thank you so much.